A dog's personality is something that we could all learn something from. You don't ever see a dog have a bad day. You don't ever see a dog have a bad, you know, he misses that mark. You don't see him give up on it. They keep going for it. Fetch. boy. The personality of a dog, you know, you always see their tails wagging. You just look at them and smile and their tails start beating, you know, and if you look at a dog, there's so many, you know, characteristics that we can learn as humans too from them. And they're always happy, they're always willing to go, they're always got the drive. Ah, boy. You know, yeah. basically they just need a bowl of water and a little food and they're happy. Fetch. So at a very young age, you know, I, I developed a, an obsession with Labradors and watching them run and, and uh, from my friend Chris Smith, you know, my uh, younger brother and his oldest son were the same age and we'd go out there to their place and, and uh, I'd watch Chris in the backyard training the dogs on his ponds and it was truly something incredible to watch and just the work that he would do with those dogs and, and, uh, and how precise he'd have each dog and, and uh, he would work through every situation. It just, it just it's instilled something in me that I wanted to be a dog handler someday. And uh, before I could even uh, act on that obsession, you know, I, I felt the, uh, the need to go serve my country. Fast forward to March of 2009. I had just come off my mid-tour leave, my two-week break. Um, I took it in middle of February. And uh, at the end of my two-week leave, I, I got down on a knee and I asked my wife to marry me. And uh, I always say that was one of the best things that I ever did or the greatest things that I ever did because that was my last opportunity to get down on a knee to propose to her. I headed back to Afghanistan. 10 days later, um, after getting back in country, uh, we, we were going on a r routine foot patrol. Uh, we pushed out of our cop on the con and pushed north into the east. And uh, we pushed into this village and uh, there was a big berm I can't believe that I remember everything that I do up to this point, but, and I walked up on top of that berm, and as I was doing that, I looked down, and right away I seen an IED. We put a charge on that, on that IED that we'd found, and uh, um, they blew that charge in place, and as soon as we blew that charge, they started shooting at us, we started shooting at them, and we were in the middle of a gunfight, and uh, we, we, held, we held in there and fought it out until uh, we had helicopters come in there, and it made very light work of, of that day. We never take the same way twice. We're taking a different path home, and uh, we came up to a big uh, canal. And there's really only one place to cross there, so my buddy Vandenbosch, she went out there and scanned it all for us, and we checked it for IEDs, and, and uh, we got the green light. And uh, we jumped the ditch. We were all fanning back out. And we heard ICOM chatter, and uh, Sergeant Hurley was getting it on the radio saying, hey, they're gonna hit us again. And I said, hey, Sergeant Hurley, where do you think they're gonna hit us from? And he says, I don't know, Jackie boy. I don't." Then it hit me. Uh, it uh, hit me hard, and I remember flipping through the air, and I could feel the heat. Uh, I felt like little fingers crawling up my back, uh, up between my shirt and my, my uh, plate carrier. And uh, I was flipping through the air, and uh, I remember landing that hit. You know, I knew I had flown pretty far. I didn't know which direction or anything, and it hit the ground pretty hard. And uh, I was looking at my left arm over here, and the whole outside of my arm, I could see was blowing out and I was having a really hard time moving the shoulder. Doc came sliding in, pulled the gear off of me, started going to work on me right away trying to get my, my bleeding to stop. And as soon as he pulled that gear off me, I sat up to try to get out of there because we were now we were in a gunfight, you know, I got caught up in a complex ambush. As soon as I sat up, I had realized that my right leg had been completely blown off and my left leg was uh, still there and but in incredibly rough shape from the knee down. I, was, I felt, I really felt like I was at the end of my life at that point. Pretty much said goodbye to my boys and I heard that rotor of the chopper coming. That doctor looked at me and said, if you can stay awake for five more minutes, I'll promise you your life. Rehab was a really difficult thing. You know, I lost uh, my thumb and my index finger on my right hand here. So um, I basically had to relearn how to relive my life at 21 years old. You know, I had to relearn how to write. I had to relearn how to eat. I had to relearn how to do literally everything in my entire life, right? Getting in and out of a car, went from a simple opening the door and getting into, uh, you know, me getting sliding across the board to get in the car and my, my fiance, you know, uh, who's uh, 19 at the time, throwing my wheelchair in the back. And me and her going through all this and two weeks out of the hospital, you know, we decided to get married and uh, we got married and uh, it was the best, greatest thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life was her. 
You know, I picked up Moose as a puppy, you know, eight weeks old, and I brought him home and, and uh, instantly fell in love with him. We just started running around, throwing the wing, getting, you know, doing all the stuff that you do with a puppy that you want to be a hunting dog. And, and uh, we started working through all that stuff gradually. And, and uh, you know, he's, we've come to the point now where he does more for me than uh, I can even uh, put into words, you know. Uh, you know, sometimes you get those thoughts of Afghanistan going back through your head or you start getting negative or, um, you know, you're not, you're heading down the wrong path that you want to be on and instantly what, I, what he can do for you is you just, you go outside, you put them bumpers out in the yard and you start running blinds or you, I can call out Chris and say, hey, let's run some marks, you know, and, and uh, he's always there, you know, he's literally always there where uh, you start getting those things that are going through your head. He's that thing that can, um, you know, just change your direction, your mind in an instant, you know. Uh, it's truly incredible what he's done for me, you know, from uh, the mental side and also the physical side of, you know, and, and, and you, he can tell when and when I'm heading down the wrong path, you know, and, and he'll, he puts his head on my lap and he knows when I need a little cheering up and, you know, luckily enough, uh, you know, I've, I've been pretty well since, you know, my injury and, and coming home from Afghanistan, but uh, it never hurts to have a good dog around the house. Should be a good morning. Everything's... Uh about as perfect as a waterfowl day can get, isn't it? It is. Pretty beautiful waterfowl awesome. day. Pretty awesome. Oh my God, that's what I live for. Get him, guys. Get them, guys. Kill him. <laughs> from my wife being there from my side, that's through all this, and now we have two beautiful children. Uh, you know, uh, there's not a whole lot more that a guy could really ask for. You know, and I got my dog Moose. Uh, my best hunting buddy and uh, uh, you know through it all they've all been by my side and they've been really my strength and, and uh, they're the ones that have helped me along this journey the most and to give me that drive every day to get up and push you know uh, to be better tomorrow you know that's, that's what I live by my life goal is you know when your life flashes before your eyes make sure it's worth watching and, and I truly believe that every day I'm out pushing that so that way when my life does flash before my eyes again um, you know, it'll be worth watching. On this Veterans Day, be sure to thank a veteran for their sacrifices. Specialist Jack Zimmerman, all of us at Mossy Oak extend our most heartfelt thank you for your service. We are honored to know you.